delighted to welcome you to our new gaming podcast. You're here with the gaming enthusiast and you're joined by Menage, the website owner. Hi. What's up? Uh, Anthony, uh, the chief editor. Hey, guys. And Tom. Hi. As well as myself, I'm Simon. Uh, uh, so, great, guys. So, this is our first gaming podcast that we're running for this website. And um, if you'd like to share any comments, feedback, positive or negative, please feel free to let us know in the comment section. But please bear in mind that we only appreciate positive comments. <laughs> Nothing negative gets on nice. the website. Nice try. Yes, <laughs> nice try. Very smooth, right? Yeah, that was a, that was a good move. <laughs> um, anyway, so obviously um, there's, a, there's a big news that came out this week, and I think we all know what that is. Obviously, I'm talking about the Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, mm-hmm. and there's just no way that we could not mention it. Uh, so I'll ask you guys first, what's your initial thoughts on the title and the announcement? I like it. I mean, I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. Like I've, I've played it since the um, since the first one. Uh, uh-huh. And, you know, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, uh, they'll make some improvements. You know, there are some people that have said it's sort of getting milked with one title a year. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I think I think it does enough. You know, um, there's a different setting and different character. And Is it really different? Like, you look at the Carib- Caribbean setting, and it looks very much like, uh, in terms of the art style, it looks very much like Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, they haven't shown much of the game, but um, in terms of, if you look at the previous titles, you can see... Uh, clear distinction between the Assassin's Creed 1, which was very medieval, you know, early medieval, was it like 12th, 12th century, wasn't it? Or uh, 11th century? Yeah, 11th century. And then you had the Renaissance with uh, Da Vinci, etc., and uh, what's his name? Ezio, Ezio di Toro. And that was very different. And then we've been thrown into, is it 18th century um, period, which looks very much like Assassin's Creed. I mean, obviously there's the whole sea thing going on, but yeah. in terms of art style, it, it just it looks very much like copy and paste drop to me. I don't want to be a pessimist about this, but it, it kind of does. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I agree that based on you know the the sort of front cover image we've been shown, yeah, it, it looks pretty similar to Assassin's Creed Three. Yeah. But, um, when I know, what... um, if you see the trailer, uh, the Blackbeard trailer. Yeah, um, he's great, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that looks awesome. Um, yeah, you know, I, I sort of have faith in Ubisoft. Um, you know, if you compare that's us. a brave statement you just made. <laughs> faith in Ubisoft. <laughs> well, I, you know, as far they've been as doing as pretty as well recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as think, Assassin's Creed go, at least, um, you know, I'd, uh, yeah, I'll check that. I, I think I think I'm pretty conflicted about the game actually because on yeah. one hand, like when I saw when I heard about it and then I saw the trailer. I was like, oh boy, here's another Assassin's Creed. We just finished exactly. three. And then and then I looked at the trailer. I was like, okay, you know, the art style isn't that different. And just, you know, the Assassin's Creed is very into the whole historical setting. And I don't think really that, that a, a new historical setting is enough to warrant a new game. So at first I was pretty skeptical. Like, okay, great. This is just an Assassin's Creed 3 just placed in a new setting, a new yeah. time period. But that's not that shouldn't be enough to warrant the game. But then I, I actually like read the details on the game, and I'm actually very impressed with the concept behind it, which is that, in a way, this isn't just Assassin's Creed again. This is more like um, a, a new naval game, a naval overworld, or a naval... Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you're, you kind of feel like a pirate. You're going around... Um, there's a like a ma- I, I I even think of a little bit of Wind Waker. You know, Wind Waker had that whole yeah, yeah. massive, um, very boring though overworld. As much as I loved Wind Waker, I didn't like the the you know the the ship part of it, the sailing. But this sounds like it is pretty good because there's going to be 50 different locations, shores around the Caribbean to explore. There's all kinds of pirates. There's jungles that you find ruins different islands, three major cities. So it's like a, a whole... I, I'm even wondering if they may, maybe should have made a whole different IP for this game. You know, this is... make what locations? You said three major locations. Did they say what locations are those? Yeah, I think they said there's one that's um, Havana, 
which is going to be similar to Venice in terms of it's very vertical. There's like a very yeah, big yeah. emphasis on being vertical, climbing high. Uh-huh. Then there's like Nassau, um, which is the, the home of the Republic of the Pirates. So it's like a pirate city. And then Kingston, which is a British-run city, but still very dangerous. Very much like Boston, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's like but, a... You know, it's, you said, yeah, you, you mentioned that, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a big open naval world. Mm-hmm. And, and that, the detail that I picked up on that I thought it was impressive was the fact that they said the whole world will be seamless. There'll be no loading sections, which I thought were really annoying in the previous mm-hmm. things where, you're moving from Boston uh, to countryside, and you have to load up the screen, which really puts you away from the whole atmosphere. Yeah. Um, but the problem is because when they, were, you know, they, they finished Assassin's Creed and they said to themselves, you know, you sat in a in a in a ballroom and they said, well, what next? You know, how can we expand the existing formula? And one guy probably said, well, you know, we're covering the entire land. So what can what else can we do? And one guy said, well, probably let's let's take a look at sea. And mm-hmm. Is it really expanding onto the formula, or is it just adding another uh, stage to where you can move around freely? Because it's like saying, "Well, we've covered the sea, we've covered the land. What next? You know, you can you can do right. air battles with, with you know, like uh, uh, during World War Two when they had like those uh, uh, airplanes battle. You know, you can you can go into that scenery. But is it really expanding, or is it just reusing the same tools into you know new? Uh, infrastructure. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I think I think something that worries me with the Assassin's Creed franchise is that you know we get a new game every year, and I think that's yeah, yeah. the biggest problem with Call of Duty is we just get too much of it. Yeah. Um, so I I you know I I hope that they start maybe doing it every other year or something. And the problem the problem is that there there are too many Assassin's Creed teams right now. I mean, Ubisoft doesn't rely on just one team for the for yeah, the yeah. franchise. So, like, as soon as Assassin's Creed Three is finished, the other team is already halfway done, and they're able to release it the, the very next year. It's not it's not the same teams doing it over and over again. So, yeah. at this rate, we and are going to get one. Yeah, and that shows because what they said in and when they went to discussing the basis of Assassin's Creed Four is that they bringing up the. Ec- system, which was apparently reduced a lot in Assassin's Creed 3. I did play it, but not that much to, to be able to tell for sure. Um, so what you have is that in Assassin's Creed 1, it was very naked game, you know, it, you didn't have much, and that why it, that's why it felt really boring at times. Mm-hmm. And then in Assassin's Creed 2, they really uh, thought this through very well, and they introduced a lot of new aspects. And then yeah. in Assassin's Creed uh, Brotherhood, and uh, what was the other one called? Uh, uh, Revelation, right. something, yeah, Revelation. yeah, and they they keep bringing features and taking them back as they see fit, and you can tell that there's lack of consistency because different teamwork on it. You know, yeah. if you see that something is working, why trying to fix it or remove it? Stick to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I'm just worried that okay, you know, the economy system didn't really work very well in Assassin's Creed Three, so they're trying to revamp it in Assassin's Creed Four. Um, is it going to work? I don't know. But, you know, do you get what I'm saying by the lack of consistency? You know, you have to make up your mind. Although there are, sometimes it could be that, that having different, like making it very different could help uh-huh. that it's not like the same thing recycled each time, which is a little bit more polished. You know, yeah. you, they're, they're forcing you to have to readjust to a whole new system. So mm-hmm. I hear what you're saying on one, on one hand that like what if it works then or, or even if it doesn't work, but maybe start trying to improve it. Yeah, but on on the other hand, I could also hear that maybe they want to try something out new, you know, so people don't get bored. But I don't yeah, know. That, that's what happened with Revelation. You guys remember it was it was basically overkill with all the mini games that you had. It was just hideous to play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But the truth is, right? If if they wouldn't have improved, said like, okay, we have a pretty decent game in Assassin's Creed One, but like yeah. there are a lot of issues. That but if we make it better, we can make this into a really good franchise. That's what they did because Assassin's Creed One it looked great. Everyone was was looking forward too. to it. Yeah, but it, it it was a little bit boring. So yeah. so Assassin's Creed Two really stepped things up and turned it into a massive franchise. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. You know, if if they can sort of revamp. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 in the way that they did Assassin's Creed 2 mm-hmm. yeah. um, then it might breathe some more life into it and I think what else is interesting is that it's been announced for the uh, the PS- next gen yeah, yeah. The next right gen. yeah um, but whether you know it ends up just being copy and pasted onto oh next definitely gen. I wouldn't care uh, for anything else because sorry Tom you go ahead yeah no I, I 
pretty much done, you know, just like um, <laughs> if, if, if it is just copy and pasted, then that's not really much to, to get hopes about. They did say what's the difference between the two different versions. They said that the uh, next generation consoles will benefit from improved physics um, and some other stuff. And it just sounds like, well, we've made this game for current generation consoles, but we need to sell it more. So we're going to bring it to next gen. And well, basically, it's going to benefit from a couple of things, which really makes no absolutely no difference <laughs> to the game. So, um, but that's yeah, going to that's going to happen a lot, though. You know, as yeah, we uh, as we transition, they're not going to drop the whole PS3 and Xbox exactly. 360 fans. There's just too many people there. So, but they're going to also want to take it. This real PS4. If you have both consoles, what? What consoles would you get it for? If you had both PS4, or PS3, what what version would you get? I think I'd always go with the best version. Yeah, I'd all, always go with PS4. The question is, how many people are going to... You could yeah. be wrong to say that, because it's a new console. It's not... It, you know, they haven't tested it well. Like yeah, that's it true. Be it might not be as polished. You might get frame rate issues, even though the hardware is much more powerful, because, you know, the developers are not familiar with the console. That is true. The launch game. Although they are making they are making it, it's an x86, they are hoping that it's not going to be complicated to develop for. Well, it's still a new thing, isn't it? It's like the first game in the front, so, you know, the first games on a, on the next gen usually end up being uh, quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? E- experimental, probably, yeah, and that's the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it, but it's on the subject of Assassin's Creed 4, because we could keep going for right. another 10 hours, probably. Yeah. Um, Another thing that we would, I would like to run by you is the SimCity subject. As you know, it came out just a few days ago. I think it was like two to three days ago. Um, and there was a lot of negative press on the SimCity because um, there was some connection issues. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if the uh, SimCity introduces the online uh, DRM system, but basically to connect to the game, you have to sign in to origin and there was issues with it just like with Diablo 3 release that people trying were trying to sign into um, the service and it wouldn't work for a number of hours and people were getting really upset about this which resulted in a very very um, horror feedback from fans uh, and that brings me on the subject how do you release a game that's so popular and do not make sure that you are ready to receive the fans and you're able to um, Deliver in terms of the server sort of capacity. Well, what, what exactly what what exactly happened there? Like, was it that they they thought that the servers would be able to handle it, and then um, they were overwhelmed, or was it that there was a there was an issue that like popped up that they weren't that they didn't know was going to happen? Like, what what uh, caused the server issues there? I don't know. I don't think they released a public statement. It was just a case of uh, it not working. That's it. Yeah, but they, they definitely wasn't there any beta or something. There, people were talking like I think you even played the the game. Yeah, yeah, the preview. I, I did no, beta. you played. It was awful. Yeah, you played it like a few months ago. No, 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 just a couple of weeks ago actually. Oh, <laughs> that but was you, a, a close bet. Uh, oh yeah, no, but you did. Yeah. You you once did an article on it. No, you, you played it somewhere. Was that from the beta? No, I didn't do an article on it. Simply, actually, no. Oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody did. <laughs> One of the editors went hands-on with it. Well, yeah. Sim- what? Situation of, um, of Sim City, I think in particular, like a lot of the problems that come up with the server have actually been brought on by the publisher themselves to some extent. Yeah. Uh, I, well, yeah, I remember hearing just before the release there was a lot of public uproar over right, the fact that your game saves would be like um, accessed online. You, they wouldn't be saved completely to your PC, so you'd have sure. to and go online to actually even load your game in the first place. I think uh-huh. uh, that, that sometimes the publishers are being way too protective of their own IP. They're too too scared to lose money, and in the process, they're they're harming the actual customers who are happy to pay. Absolutely. Do you th- do you think that it's like worth it? Meaning, if if you go to the Pirate Bay, right? If you go to the Pirate Bay right now, you'll see like a, you know thousands and thousands of people downloading games for free. Um, yeah. So there definitely is something to be worried about. But the question is, um, is it worth it? Well, personally, I don't think that like quite often when somebody pirates a game, I don't think there are people who necessarily pay for the game if they couldn't pirate anyway. Mm-hmm. 
I think it's a matter of I'll have it because it's free quite often. Right. Um, plus, not to mention, a lot of people seem to use um, torrents to actually, well, take illegal demos of games. Right. And right. they'll quite often go on to purchase the game anyway. So um, right. it's hard for really publishers to get any idea of what sort of amount of statistics are actually damaging their business. Mm hmm what do you yeah, what do you um, think of like the on um you know there's there's like you you buy you buy little items and stuff like that throughout the game that's becoming like more more common way of making oh, money what, what? Microtransactions. microtransactions yeah. right that's yeah, the I right. called it mini transactions sorry <laughs> i i use it so so infrequently microtransactions um that i, I can't even remember the word you know <laughs> but what what do you guys think of that is that just like a necessary oh, evil to what anthony said yeah um, Anthony, so you, you said that you know it's really difficult for developers to um, to know what kind of uh, what amount of you know those torrent copies of the games are actually customers who buy the game afterwards or don't buy it completely. And um, I was reading an article a couple of months back from uh, one of the executive producers of Witcher uh, from the CD Project Red, and he was saying that you know, obviously they don't support piracy, but they're not so much against it like Ubisoft or EA or uh, Blizzard because they understand that there's just no way that when you release a game onto um, into public that, you know, is going to be fully protected. It's going to get hacked. So why coming out with those ridiculous uh, security systems, you know, if you show support to community, they'll appreciate it. And in the end, it comes down to a simple matter. If your game is good, people will buy it most of the times. And, you know, I sometimes download uh, games off uh, torrent websites because I'm just too lazy to put in a CD room into my uh, into my disk drive. And that doesn't mean I'm not a paying customer. It just means it's easier for me to play on it, you know, play the game digitally rather than uh, for a physical copy. Um, and I, I don't think piracy is so much of an issue. Um... And yeah, I mean, I'm just going off the topic right now. So, uh. <laughs> no, but, yeah, well, well, the thing is, you don't find everyone doing this. This is this is this is not like every single game now. How you have to be online to play it. So no, it's obviously not affecting everyone. So. Yeah, I, 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 I like the um, what you said about the publishers of which uh, sort of uh, you know not supporting yeah. PC, but not being so much against it. I you know when you hear like you know, the people behind The Sims and Call of Duty and stuff, you hear them complaining yeah. about piracy. And, you know, they're just like such massive, you know, figures. Of people. Developers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like if it was a small indie company complaining about it, I could understand or sympathise more. Mm -hmm. When it's, you know, yeah. the big cats, it's like, you know, you're going to make millions anyway. <laughs> yeah, it, it just like frustrates everyone. It makes everyone angry. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I said that the um, Sim City beta was really annoying because there was just so many problems with it. Uh, problem number one was that you basically have to use Origin for that uh, to download the client for this game, and Origin is just a dreadful, mm -hmm. a dreadful service compared to Steam. Right. Um, and the game starts, and it tells you instantly that you only have one hour to play this game. So, what's the? How much testing can you do in one hour? <laughs> how much enjoyment can you get out of one hour? And the time restriction was just so annoying that it really pissed me off from the very beginning and uh, the more frustrating thing was that before you can actually start the, the game you have to go through tutorial and that was just like basics but half an hour of basic which means how do you build roads how do you build industrial areas how do you mm -hmm. build residential areas it's like come on I've played through every single sim to the game I know how to build <laughs> you know, rows. Do you really have to put me through that? Why can't you do tutorial on new features? There wasn't any new features done that, now that I could tell, but, you know, that was really annoying. There was no way to skip the tutorial, and something like that really um, puts you off, you know? It's small details like that, but it actually makes a huge difference. And then I went into our origin, I checked the price of, and that's interesting, the price of the pre-ordered SimCity cost £59.99. Um... To give you a perspective, that's probably like sixty-nine to seventy-nine dollars American dollars. Yeah, something like that. And that is a huge amount considering that you only pay for a digital download, uh, sorry, digital version of the game. And the same thing happens with the PlayStation Store, where you go online, you want to buy a game, and it's sixty pounds. And you're just thinking, why? Why? If I can pick the same game from a retail for half the price, why do they charge you twice the money? 
for digital. You, they don't have yeah. to manufacture it. They don't have mm -hmm. uh, put it on shelves. They don't have to pay the people to do all of that. What you know? What justifies the price of those highly expensive titles on PlayStation Store and Origin? Is there an excuse for that? Not really. Yeah, pretty good point. Because um, <clears throat> really, what they're doing is actually damaging their own market opportunity. That absolutely sells out. And um, until they actually do that, digital is never actually going to take off until we see a change in pricing on them. Mm -hmm. No. And it, what's also nice is to see that there's also like a force moving against it, like a momentum the opposite direction. Like just look at Steam sales. Steam sales, like people are like, oh, things are on sale. Um, let me buy everything, even if I don't need the That's game. What I do. <laughs> That's what I think everyone does. It's like, oh, there's five games on yeah. sale today. Oh, I might one day want to play it. You know, I might as well buy it now. So you see that sales really work. Lowering prices work. Free to play is becoming more of a thing now. Um, yeah. So. I'm I'm questioning, like if, if you know even cutting the price of a console could really shoot up the sales. So the question like is, do you do you really want to shoot to yourself? Big, guys, you know, huh? You mentioned to me that sale price in of a PlayStation Vita in Japan, which really um, yeah. rocketed the sale, isn't it? Yeah, that just and happened today. He said that we're not planning to do any price cut in North America, and I was like, well, what was the <laughs> point of doing it in Japan then? Right. We're not going to do it internationally. Right. Um, but you do make a fair point because Steam is an amazing service and I absolutely love it. You know, I generally don't like digital games because I like having a physical copy in my hands. Mm -hmm. But you just can't resist. Just today I bought Arma 2 for £3.75 or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't resist a sale like this. Um, so, uh, really, for Origin or any digital service to succeed, they have to understand that they need to be able to compete with retail um, and that's not going to be achieved by doubling the price um, and I do like uh, digital downloads uh, on uh, because of one reason, when you buy a retail copy of the game uh, only around 30% of the profit goes to the developer where mm -hmm. if it's a digital download, it's 70-80% to 80 of the entire profit of this game that you purchase goes right into the developer pocket, which is what should happen because they've made the game and they should get the money from you, not the yeah. retail, not the not, not the, the publisher, factory, not the shipping company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. I think that's an interesting point, and that actually again makes me question why they're charging more for digital when they're actually yeah. reaping a like, percentage back. Yeah, I, that's the whole thing with indies right now is that the indie developers, they with digital distribution, they don't have to look for a publisher anymore. So that's what's always limited them in creativity is that if you can't make a great pitch to a publisher and then let them take a major cut from your revenue, then you don't get yeah. a game. So that's the more the digital dis distribution spreads, the more that we could start cutting the publishers out of the picture and more focusing on the developers and what they want to make. Exactly, and with the, uh, I think they announced that the PlayStation will support um, a similar platform to apps so where small developers mm -hmm. uh, can actually publish their work. It kind of works like the Steam Greenlight, if you guys are familiar with it, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so anyone, pretty much anyone, can upload anything onto a, uh, on the, if it's obviously uh, certified by some standard um, qualifications. And I think that's a brilliant idea because PlayStation Store, for instance, has always been a very uh, high-end, highly restricted mm -hmm. platform for any developers. Yeah. Uh, same goes for Microsoft. Um, yeah, Microsoft and is even worse. And there's a, there's a massive shift in Sony um, philosophy, you know, open architecture for the console. Yeah. Open yeah. approach to developers, uh, open platform for development. I think it's going in the right direction in that sense because they realize that, you know, they're not this... Uh, gigantic company that everyone has to, uh, you know, it, they're not like this um, monument of uh, greatness. You know, they have to talk to small developers. They have to talk to small people, so that everyone can benefit from that. Not other way around, isn't it? Yeah, it. I, I like the fact that they're like the console. I think that all the consoles 
in general, those the companies. May, I don't know about Microsoft, but I think at least Nintendo and Sony are are realizing that they really have to expand. Like their console industry is not the only market out there. There is indies, yeah. there's PC, and the more that you make um, you make your console um, easy to work with, you're just gonna benefit by get by bringing people over from other markets. Like even look yeah. at the Ouya. You know that that I don't I don't think it will, I don't think it will do well, but it it's still a yeah. sick. <laughs> what do you guys think? Will it work? Well? I don't think it's going to be so successful, but it still did represent a certain outcry in the gaming industry that like make this an open box that anybody could just start using it. Stop making it so restrictive. So it's yeah. nice to see that Sony's doing that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it, like um, you know, indie gaming is definitely becoming massively more sort of respected and getting its feet and stuff you know like journey yeah um, journey minecraft you know, yeah yeah exactly like these games that are you know are kind of small in scope but won so many awards and mm -hmm. you know, i think journey was like ign's game of the year or something yeah um, yeah i'd so, agree with that yeah yeah i do and i i think that these sort of um you know, the big guys like Microsoft and Sony definitely have to realise that, and I think they are, and, you know, I think that's good. Yeah. I think moving forward, one of the things that needs to change, um, at least on Microsoft's end, is the the incredible fee that any developer has to pay just to even release an update for their title. Mm -hmm. There's got some damage to games in the past. In this generation, games have gone unpatched due to uh, people not having the funds for it. Yeah, it's, it's something like ten thousand dollars, I think, to patch a Microsoft game. I think yeah. it's actually yeah. serious. That's really yeah. Fez, that was the issue with Fez. That Fez came out right away. It had like a game-breaking bug, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the ten thousand dollars to spend to to pay for a patch. Well, they should have polished their game first before releasing it. That's another thing, isn't it? Well, the thing is that it was in production for like seven years, Fez. So well, they thought well, it was okay. There's no excuse for stuff like this, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, I have to be honest, though. I think the fee is considerably higher. I think it was around the forty thousand mark. Really? Wow. Yeah, which is a lot of money to pay just to release an update. Yeah, I heard. Um, apparently, uh, Minecraft, uh, like the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty version, gets um, hardly any updates. Whereas, like, if you have it, you know, uh, on your computer, you, there's yeah. updates all the time. Right. And apparently, that's just because they, you know. Microsoft charge so much to patch it. What's the what's the reasoning behind charging for patching a game? Like it, um, if it's just going to improve the game, you know, I, I need well, there's it. There's a reason for that actually. I think. What is the reason? Um, well, I was doing an internship with EA, and we were talking about oh, right, so um, this whole process of patching games. You know, mm -hmm. and the idea is that when you when you release a game on a certain platform, in different platforms, in, uh, like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo have different regulations. And of all these three uh, companies, Nintendo is the most strict when it comes to regulation and uh, following certain rules. And I think the idea is that when the platform uh, sees the number of patches uh, that basically fixes the game, it doesn't produce a very good image of A, the company that produced the game, and B, mm -hmm. the, the, the company that basically the game is released on, because it, it tells you this, the message that, well, this game is not very well developed, mm -hmm. it's buggy, it's not well polished, so it's kind of like a punishment, I think, that um, uh, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft are putting on these developers that you know you, you better damn make sure that your game is good uh, enough that you don't have to do that all the time because that uh, you know that shrinks our image, not just yours but also ours. Right, I see. I see the point. It, it, it's basically um, between the publisher and the developer that you developers yeah. better get your your show your, like get your things together, get your act yeah. together. But, uh, the, you know, but the, if that's true, I'm not surprised because I would do the same thing. You know? The thing is that I think that Nintendo actually, with the Wii U, they they changed their regulations. They they no longer charge for that. It's, you can make as many updates as you want. Well, they're trying to catch up with. The they're trying to catch up, so right? When it comes to <laughs> right. um, social and uh, social need, yeah, uh, connectivity and multiplayer, that you know they have no choice but to offer right. something more. Right. But now, but now um, it comes out that Sony and Nintendo both don't have pri um, charges anymore, but Microsoft still does. So the question is, is Microsoft going to respond to that? Well, there's a perfect 
perfectly logical explanation for that because uh, ever since Bill Gates became the fourth richest man on the earth, mm-hmm. he decided to be the first one again, and he needs to get money from somewhere. <laughs> so he starts seeing everyone. Yeah. That's probably not the reason, but anyway, <laughs> um, that's it. Yeah, that. probably not. Uh, all the uh, all the topics. Let's move on to the PlayStation Four. Yeah. Now I didn't want to do too much of PlayStation Four because every single website out there probably did like uh, tons of content uh, coverage on the PlayStation Four. But what I did want to ask you guys is that how do you really feel about the next PS3? I mean, we all know it's great. We're all gonna buy it probably. It looks fantastic. But the problem for me that raises is. Is what PS4 is offering enough to call to be called the next generation? Because what do we define by next generation? Is it just graphics? I mean, you know when Nintendo uh, Wii came out, it was really, uh, in, in some respect, next generation because it reintroduced the whole motion of uh, uh, motion control gaming, and that was very revolutionary. And obviously the PS2, uh, sorry, PS3 and, and 360 did revolutionize the um, industry with improved visuals and, you know, connectivity that was never seen before. But what really PS, the PS4 is doing is just extending on what's already out there. So is it really next-gen, or is it just like small step forward? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like, it's sort of, um, when you get down to, like, the bare bones of what the PS4, yeah. what they've said about it so far, is there's a lot of stuff No, already... You know, yeah, exactly. there's a lot of emphasis on share. You know, apparently, yeah. has got its you know own share button. There's a lot of emphasis on online play, and you know, been a lot hype about the graphics and the trailers for the games and stuff. Yeah. But you know, apart from that, I sort of yeah, I see what you mean. It, it does, in a way, feel more like the extension and it's like PS3.5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sort of it, and, it looks like. Uh, Tom, you know, tell me, don't you feel that you know the, the features that are installed on the PS4, isn't it more of necessity rather than uh, a privilege? I mean, any console should have that these days, you know, strong social media connections. It's not yeah. really a feature. It, it's, it's, it should be there in the first place. Yeah, I, I can see what you mean. Like, it, it does feel more like a sort of an announcement similar to, like, the connect or the move or something. It, it, yeah. Like if they just announced that and said this is something we're going to add onto the PS3, I yeah. I wouldn't be thinking you know that should be on the next gen console. It, yeah. Yeah. You know. But I mean, there's still a lot to see and. Oh, absolutely! I would. I love to see more of Deep Down game. It looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I, I have my own theory personally as to why uh-huh. they. Um, so much focus on sharing is uh, as you noticed as well. I'm sure they they've now added a microphone port to the controller, so they're obviously yeah, going yeah. for a big online focus. I think um, a lot of the actual presentation was trying to actually show people we're going to compete with Microsoft in this area next time because it's somewhere where they're held behind this generation. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 very. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go on, go on it's sort of like what you were saying it's sort of like Sony got up on stage and said our big announcement is that our next gen console is going to keep up with technologies um, of today you know like That's very well said like very well said. it's yeah. not like we're going to introduce a revolution but it's like guess what we're keeping up with everything you know and yes, and, well, and it could like be Apple announcement yeah here is iPhone 5S it's just the same as the previous one but <laughs> with two cameras Whoa. right Right, like you guys like streaming videos and sharing that with everyone. Um, you know, there's YouTube going on, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep up with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we acknowledge the presence of social media. That's what it is, isn't it? And that took them. Yeah, to we acknowledge that. that. But the thing yeah. is that it is saying something because Nintendo doesn't always acknowledge it. You know, they, and they very often do that specifically to try and say like, no, we're going to go in a completely different direction. But but Sony is not trying to do that. They want to keep up with the industry, so they're just saying, guess what? PS4 will keep up with the industry. Absolutely. Yeah, and they have rights to do what they're doing, isn't it? Yeah. Although I, w- I, mean, I also agree that I, I, I really wish we could have seen something more revolutionary. As much as I'm yeah. excited to see what is going to be created with this system, 
the hardware looks amazing. The games look pretty cool. But you're right. Like I, I wish there was a little bit more just to add in some cool innovations there. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on, um, um, you know, social media and sharing and stuff. And I, I, I just kind of thought, you know, that's great and all, but, uh, you know, I, I'm buying a PS4 to play games. Mm-hmm. I'd rather yeah. focusing more on gameplay, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, you'll not be disappointed because Sony, unlike any other company, always prioritise gaming, and that's really something they should be... Uh, proud of because they do acknowledge the core gamers out there like us who all we care about is just sitting in front of a TV, you know, getting the uh, gamepad and just playing games you know, old fashioned games, that's all we care we don't care about Facebook uh, YouTube, sharing, whatever we just care about games, right, and they still do that, so as long as they keep doing it I think everyone's going to be happy um, yeah. and we're running out of time, so I think uh, I'd like to mention last subject um and that's the subject of Gran Turismo 6 and uh, GTA 5. Now these games are GTA, uh, Gran Turismo 6 is not yet announced, but there are rumors that it's going to be announced during the E3 conference this year. Um, now my question for these two games is that are these games still relevant? Because essentially GT, GTA 4 came out a number of years ago, and ever since we've seen a number of great sandboxing games like uh, uh, what was that game with Cowboys and uh, come on, guys, help me out. Uh, I mean, no, uh, I know. What's it called? Uh, uh, Red, Red Dead Redemption, sorry. Uh, Red Dead, yeah. A uh, number of others as well. Now, the question is, are these games still relevant in the sense that, you know, what they offer is very much what's out there, you know. There, there was the L.A. Noir, which was very much like uh, GTA. And so when the GTA comes out, is it going to be revolutionary? Or is it going to follow the same suit that you know the previous installation did? And if so, can it still hold the crown for some boxing games? And the same goes for the Gran Turismo. You know, is it going to be as good as? Is it still going to hold the crown of uh, you know racing simulation? Uh, because we've got competition like Forza, we've got competition like Project Cars, which, which looks fantastic. Uh, so really, my worry is that um, the gaps between these uh, different uh, the gaps between the releases of these games are so big that when they come out they often uh, fall behind the competition which is much more updated with what's going on in the industry and I'm just worried that for instance when when uh, you know GTA 5 comes out it will be absolutely irrelevant because we've got Watch Dogs which look absolutely fantastic uh, and I'm just worried you know can GTA 5 deliver I think to be honest um the GTA 5 really, regardless of quality, I have to say it looks really good from what they've shown so far, what they've said about uh-huh. it. There definitely seem to be a lot of new features which we haven't seen in, well, any other sandbox game, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. Aside from that, I think quality aside, nothing can stop the game from selling the, the amount that it usually oh, would yeah. It's going to sell, uh-huh. but... but um, for Gran Turismo 6 in particular, I think it's really hard to say what's going to happen with that game until we see something. They have mm-hmm. industry access to like to no other level that no other developer can get to. But they've proved with Gran Turismo 5 as well that they can easily slip behind even with that extra access. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. Well, I think that I would actually say um, the exact opposite, that... Grand, for Grand Theft Auto Five, I actually don't don't like it at all the way it looks. Um, to me, it doesn't. I, I would probably rather play Grand Theft Auto Four at this point um, than play Grand Theft Auto Five. I didn't see it all that much that really gra- hooked me in. And like you were saying about Red Dead Redemption, that like that was like a whole new um, twist on things. That I was like, you know what? Even though this is a another sandbox game, but they're they're doing yeah. things differently. And with Grand Theft Auto Five, I don't know. There's something about it that just doesn't look. You know, it's a little bit more polished. Um, yeah. It's it's going to be much larger. But it's like, what is really drawing me into this that I haven't seen already, except a couple of a couple of features that are cool. Uh-huh. But is it really enough to make it? Of course, like, you're right. It's going to sell like like hotcakes. But for yeah. me, I don't really feel so interested in it. I I don't know. And I agree with you, you know, on, the, on, that, on that subject because it just seems like it's more of the same, mm-hmm. the nicer polished graphics, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think they will slip behind in terms of what they offer uh, compared to competition. You know, I think 
watch looks, looks so fantastic uh, and it introduces so many new things to sandboxing game that we haven't seen out there uh, that the GTA is you know is in trouble in, in that uh, in that respect but obviously I you know I, I completely agree with you Anthony uh, they're gonna say regardless to, to whatever the game you know um, consists of only I mean you, st- you know you, we are we all like these uh, big titles and I'm just worried that you know can they still maintain the crown for being the best sandbox you know, for being the best racing game uh, so that's really what's troubling me I think the competition has definitely stepped up a lot over the last few years in mm. the sandbox field as well um, yeah I- just Cause 2 made a much bigger dent than anybody expected, mm-hmm. um, considering the lackluster sales of the original. And with that now being teased as well, they're going to have a lot of competition in the play just for fun sort of sandbox world that doesn't take itself too seriously, which yeah. I think people wanted from Grand Theft Auto 5, but return to the San Andreas film. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, like... Um so at the end of the day, you know, obviously you can have games that are deep and maybe think and stuff in the same way that mm. you have reviews. Heavy rain like games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. But you know, a lot of people, you know, want games that are just fun, regardless of anything. Really. Saints Row, for instance. Yeah, yeah Saints Row. Yeah. That's why it went over so well. It was just fun, you know. Yeah, you know, and I think Just Cause Two, you know, Saints Row, they're they're just fun games. They're ridiculous, but they're fun. And yeah. maybe that's what's important. But if you ask me, like, which one do I want more, Just Cause 3 or Grand Theft Auto 5, I think I'm more looking for it for Just Cause 3. You know? Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'm going to buy both probably. Yeah, I, yeah, we'll probably Sucker get... <laughs> we'll, we'll all get them all, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like, you know, Just Cause 3 is also... It's, like, massive world... Um, yeah. And and it just a lot of craziness, <laughs> you know. Isn't it the biggest sandboxing commercially available sandboxing game out there? Yeah, it's our cost too, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I, I think so. And to top it off, it actually has, um, I'd say, it has better graphical fidelity than the last Grand Theft Auto released by quite a long shot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The frame Especially the environments. Yeah, yeah. The draw distances. Yeah, the draw distances is incredible. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Well, this the problem is that when you when you try and exceed graphically in one aspect, you fall behind in another. And I think what GTA did is that it managed to balance, you know, both the character design, uh, the character graphics, as well as the environment graphics. And in Just Cause 2, we can see that the model characters are not well polished. No. You know, the uh, the motion uh, capture is not that well designed. Uh, there are some textures issues. Uh, I think it's just it, it's not the same budget you know and you can you can really see that throughout the entire game but you know in the aspect of environments graphically it definitely exceeds uh gta 4 yeah and 5 for that matter as well probably yeah 5 is actually looking surprisingly outdated already from the screenshots (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah it does no rest yeah that was surprising like it's been in, in development for a number of years now isn't it so yeah. Yeah, since 2008. Yeah. You know what else was good in terms of open environments? Far Cry 3. That was another game that just like raised the bar. Oh, yeah. On, I haven't uh, that one. I've never played it much, um, if, if at all, actually, so I can't comment. Yeah. Uh, check that out. It's cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, a, quite an impressive game for, well, to be honest, to see that you can cram that much into a first person shooter and still make it open world. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. Going, yeah, and I think they proved that you don't need to. Uh, crisis one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crisis one did that. Oh, we, we were going to talk about crisis three, you know? I don't, I don't think we have time because we're right. over 45 minutes now, so I think we should stop probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that went really quickly. Uh, everyone's cool to finish? Yeah. 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 Okay, well then, uh, well that's it for tonight, I guess. Uh, thank you guys for being here and I hope you guys on the other end enjoyed listening to us and be sure to post comments and feedback and uh, we'll see you next time okay and if you made it till the end achievement unlocked you know (laughs) (laughs) (laughs)